Well, good morning, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. It is Monday morning, the last day of June 2014, and it is a little after 6 a.m. Eastern Time here. Today's video update is sponsored by Metal Magic in Washington. You can give Chad a call at 698-8555 for all of your paintless tent repair needs. And tell them Southern Indiana Weather sent you, folks. They do a fantastic job. They're PDR Nation certified, so... Uh, why waste your time going to anybody else? They do a great job. Write that number down. All right. Now, we may end up needing that uh, that number here. The Storm Prediction Center has issued some risks for our area that I want to talk about very briefly with you. To, this is today's risk, and you can see the slight risk extends, well, basically here from uh, points around Indianapolis and, and northward. If I just put the towns on here, you can see Indianapolis is included. This would include basically around Terre Haute and on. Uh, northward up to here. Tornado probabilities. Here's your wind probabilities. You can see the wind probabilities. This uh, this brown is the 5%. It extends as far south as the Ohio River here. So, uh, And the 5% is a marginal risk. So you're talking about an isolated severe thunderstorm threat here at best. And uh, you can see that it extends for hail as well as it does for the wind. So a very isolated threat for most of us today. Uh, and you don't get into the real threats until you start to go up to Indianapolis, Terre Haute, on to the north and east. And you can see uh, just the, the biggest threat here, sort of bullseyed over Iowa, Missouri, and uh, portions of Illinois. Now tomorrow is a different story. Tomorrow that slight risk moves down into our area, although I'm a little skeptical of how far north the slight risk really goes here. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second when we look at future radar. You'll see what I mean. Probabilistically, you can see that means a 15% risk zone. It's a very low end slight risk. And the 5% risk zone marginal risk surrounds it for the rest of the area as well. All right, so let's talk about what we got coming on right now. Let's go to uh, our current satellite and radar view. I do think today is going to be one of those days where we have a very isolated storm at absolutely best. Now, it's sort of mostly cloudy out there right now. And um, you're not really seeing that very well on, on the radar. But if you just look out, uh, trust me, I'm looking out my window, which is uh, behind the computer screen here, and uh, there's just nothing but wall-to-wall -wall clouds in the sky. But as you can see, they're not they're not very uh, they're not very uh, uh, thick high clouds. As we take a look at the satellite, you see they're very low clouds. They're having a struggle, uh, even being pulled up on uh, up on the uh, infrared overnight satellite here. Uh, but there are some clouds around, and you can see um, you know 72 is the current temperature here in Jasper. Uh, uh, 40, 74, not 47, reading that backwards there just a little bit. We wish it was 47 sometimes uh, in the Evansville area. So you can see it's still a muggy day. If I take off the satellite, though, you can see the radar a little bit clearer, and you can see you've got an ongoing thunderstorm complex. But uh, you can also see that it's sort of moving away from us. It is moving in this fashion. Uh, you've got more that are back here. The radar actually develops a few things, and eventually this will all start pushing our way. But you, what, you, what I want you to notice is there's nothing really uh, major here uh, pushing our way for today. So uh, this is going to be one of those type of days where any thunderstorm development that we get is just going to be what we call an air mass thunderstorm. It's just going to be because we're going to be stinking hot and humid under partly to mostly cloudy skies, probably more partly cloudy this afternoon. Um, you're you're going to get these what we call air mass thunderstorms popping up, and it's just it's so hot and humid that they pop up. They're going to be very slow moving, and they're going to dump a ton of rain and then rain themselves out and collapse on themselves. That would be the story of the day for anything that we would get here. So let's take a look at it on future radar. And you'll see exactly what I mean. Here is that complex to our north, and it kind of fizzles out. It's actually a little stronger than what the models were indicating it would be, but that's okay. And then you've got some more rain that moves in out of Iowa down into central Illinois here, and then that sort of fizzles out as well. And here we are by noon. You can still see absolutely nothing going on in our area, maybe like one tiny dot here around the Henderson-Owensboro area, but that's not very aggressive with that at all. And then you put this into motion, you continue on through the afternoon hours, you start to see maybe a little tiny dot or two every hour here on the map. Here we are, maybe a finally a, a little dot of a shower here, maybe around 9 o'clock tonight. So you can see, again, future radar is not very aggressive with this at all. If I were to show you the HER model, which is our highest resolution future radar, you would see much of the same thing, only you would see an occasional dot or two 
of a thunderstorm on the map here or there, sort of those air mass thunderstorms. Not a very strong chance at all today. In fact, I think probably 90% of us are going to stay dry, or maybe even 99% of us. Uh, but there is just a very tiny chance of a, of a thunderstorm this afternoon. I've went with a 20% chance. I could easily lower it to a 10% chance. It's just it, the, the risk is not very big there. Then as you see, we go through on Tuesday. Here we go through on Tuesday. It's mostly dry as well. But here's where the slight risk comes in. By the time you get to 8 o'clock at night, you notice uh, this, by the way, is the cold front pretty much. <coughs> excuse me. Cold front. Uh, pretty much along this location. So you got some thunderstorms riding that cold front. Let me get this back where I was here. And you can see it sort of blows up in Kentucky, which is, I think, maybe a justification of the slight risk down there. But as I said, uh, how far north does this slight risk fly? Well, if I could just keep it on here, you'll see exactly what I mean. Because by the time these storms start to explode, you notice that they've largely missed the Indiana area. And that's why I say how far north this slight risk goes. Because here's the Ohio River right here where my cursor is. How far north this slight risk really should go tomorrow is very much in question. At this time, the way it looks, I'm not sure that Indiana should be included in the slight risk at all. Uh, I understand erring on the side of caution, so I'm not against what they've done here. The Storm Prediction Center does a great job generally. Uh, but, you know, this is one of those days where I'm not so sure that the slight risk should be this far north. I agree there should be a slight risk, and I think it's going to be more in Kentucky than it is uh, for us. And you can see that play out on the future radar. We'll see whether future radars in the future hold that as well or not. All right. Let's talk about your forecast for today. Here is your latest plan your day forecast sponsored by, for heaven's sake, gift shop there in Ferdinand. Again, I went with a 20% chance of an isolated storm today. Just to begin, there are some differences in the future radar views. But regardless, none of them have just very much coverage for us at all. Went with a 20% chance. Most of us will end up staying dry, but we get into the 90s really pretty much all across the area. And it's going to be a muggy night as well. Uh, the rain will start to come to an end, and it will become extremely isolated overnight. I mean, if you think it was isolated during the day, it's going to be more isolated overnight, probably down to more like a 10% chance, and uh, otherwise just sort of partly cloudy skies with temperatures the low 70s to the north into the mid-muggy 70s by the time you go here to the south. Let's go to southernindianaweather.com, and we'll take a look very quickly here at your seven-day forecast. Uh, again, a very slight chance of an isolated thunderstorm today, but look at this. Temperatures in the 90s again with all that. Tomorrow we get a bit of a reprieve. We go out down only, only to 88, uh, but partly cloudy again. Isolated thunderstorms looks like the best chance is later in the day for that. Um, and again, an isolated strong to severe thunderstorm is possible or technically under a slight risk. But again, I think the biggest uh, chance of that is going to be down in Kentucky. Anything that we get uh, severe would be isolated at best on Tuesday. But then look at this. By the time Wednesday comes in, folks, I've got a great forecast coming up for the weekend. We, the cold front moves through on Tuesday evening. And take a look at this. By Wednesday, we're into partly cloudy skies. It's a very isolated thunderstorm chance. And really, that's more in the morning hours and then it's gone. And you've got an 85 degree high under partly cloudy skies. Partly cloudy, look at this on Thursday, 81 for your high. Fourth of July, 82 degrees and mostly sunny skies. Look at this, by the time you wake up on Saturday morning into the low 60s as well. So certainly by the time you go to fireworks, you're going to be falling through the 70s under mostly clear skies uh, for fireworks after dark. Uh, it's going to be an absolutely beautiful Fourth of July, so get out and enjoy it. Uh, the way things are looking right now, I know the Dubois County Bombers have a game with some fireworks. It's always fun to go to. Uh, and a lot of the other uh, communities around here, Evansville, Owensboro, and some of the smaller towns as well have fireworks. Absolutely beautiful day for that coming up for us. And then the good weather sticks around. It's nice to finally be able to see a few days in the forecast where we where we don't have rain. And uh, by the way, this is the old pattern that we've been in pretty much since October on. You remember we were in, uh, we would go above normal for just a little bit, and then we dip down below normal and stay below normal for a while and uh, then go back and repeat the cycle. Well, the, the pattern really never changed. We just went above normal for a longer period of time than we had. And the really the difference is here also is that the seasons changed. Uh, but our normal high is 86. And you can see we're actually going to go uh, below our normal high by five or six degrees, even potentially at, at some times. So I wouldn't be surprised, uh, you know, for whenever we hit these high temperatures of 81, 82 for some of our northern tier of counties, not even to make it out of the 70s on those days at the upper 70s. So it's certainly possible, and that's below normal, but uh, we'll take it because that's very pleasant and refreshing after where we have been. But, uh, you know, uh, don't get used to it because the 90s are going to make a return. It is only a matter of time, but we will enjoy that brief reprieve while we can get it. All right, folks, that is it for this Monday morning edition of your latest video forecast. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great day. Stay, folks, stay safe out there, folks. And
And remember, any isolated warnings that do come up, no matter how isolated or scattered in nature they end up being, remember you can keep it tuned right here to Southern Indiana Weather on Facebook and Twitter. The win warnings will post automatically. You can also go here onto our weather uh, page and be able to click on a great live radar, and that will take you out there, folks, in another tool that you can use. All right, folks, have a great day. Stay safe, and we will see you next time.